Today we will discuss the following art pieces. Hi, welcome to Art History with Ronaldo. As human beings, we realize that nature is an important force that shapes cultural beliefs and practices in our society. Animals are especially important contributors to society. We have dog with a blog, dogs who have been in space, and now dogs who will help us to learn art history. Ronaldo here, she's here, <laughs> is a dog and a world-renowned art historian who will help us in examining art pieces. And joining us today is McScale, who is Ronaldo's translator. Uh, today we will focus on the theme of human relation with nature and how that has transcended through history and inspired our ancestors to create art. One moment, please. Okay, Ronaldo says that for the first segment of our show, we will travel to France to explore some of the best known Paleolithic art. to France to further examine these paintings, which we believe are fascinating and should be further examined. Ronaldo, what do you have to say about this? What Ronaldo means by this is that by the untrained eye, the Chauvet cave and the Lascaux cave paintings look very similar. And in some aspects, they are. They are both cave paintings from the Paleolithic era found in France depicting wild animals and deal with the concerns found in a hunting and gathering society. However, Ronaldo says that a true art historian can spot the differences between these two works of art. First of all, Ronaldo notices that the content is slightly different. The Lascaux paintings here uh, depict animals that were important to everyday survival, such as cows and bulls and deer and uses a variety of color. The Chauvet cave paintings depict predatory animals, such as frightening rhinoceroses, bears, panthers. These were not very common animals, they were predatory. And it uses a monochromatic color, <laughs> using mainly charcoal. Next, we travel to Germany and New Guinea, where we have just discovered two ancient artifacts that we believe must be discussed. Ronaldo will now go fetch these artifacts for us and enlighten us. Wow. Thanks, Ronaldo. What do you have to say about these art pieces? What he means by this is that both of these carvings depict animal forms. They also, they are subtractive and are both sculptures in the round. The Lion Man of Holenstein Stein was carved from mammoth tusk using a simple flint cutting tool, and the Ambum stone was carved from gray whack, which is sandstone with 15% clay. Both of these objects are small enough to be held in your hand or your paws. <laughs> <laughs> the lion man here is 11 inches tall, and the Ambum stone is 8 inches tall. Uh, both of these pieces are anthropomorphic, meaning they have human and animal characteristics. The lion man's female head and human hind legs uh, give it a therianthropic quality as well. All of these artworks portray a shamanistic function and were also all found in caves. The fact that they are all in a secluded area shows that they were only meant to be seen at specific times, such as during rituals. It has been suggested that the lion man carving is a shaman with a lion mask. We can see that all of these works show the important relationship human beings have with the natural world, especially animals. This special relationship led humans to recreate animal forms in their art. The Lion Man reveals how humans at one point thought of animals and humans as part of one common group of beings who shared the world. The Ambum Stone shows how humans credited animals with sacred and supernatural powers. The cave paintings represent how important animals were in the hunting and gathering society. Join us next time on History with Ronaldo. History with Ronaldo. And History with Ronaldo. Do you
used to call me on my cell phone. Late night when you need me. 